Greetings, Calvary family. I uh, hope you had a wonderful Easter. I do admit uh, it was hard not uh, being able to see you here in church, um, but I'm trusting that the Spirit was present with you uh, where you celebrated Easter. We're back to do another uh, word from God's Word, uh, an encouragement to you. We took last week off during Holy Week. We hope that you were able to just spend some time uh, in God's Word and doing some other things, but it felt important to maybe start these back up. I don't know exactly how long we'll do them or what the Lord will provide, but it seemed important to have a word of encouragement. But in addition to that, also an opportunity to explain, at least from my point of view, what seems to be going on. And so the passage that the Lord has for us today uh, is from Jeremiah 39. I just want to read a few verses and then make a few comments that I hope explains a little more about at least my perspective on what's going on in the world today with the coronavirus, this plague it seems, uh, and how that fits into kind of the biblical presentation of what God is up to. In Jeremiah 39, uh, beginning probably in the middle of verse 16, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says, I am about to fulfill my words against this city words concerning disaster, not prosperity. At that time, they will be fulfilled before your eyes. But I will rescue you on that day, declares the Lord. You will not be given into the hands of those you fear. I will save you. You will not fall by the sword, but will escape with your life because you trust in me, declares the Lord. Now, the setting in Jeremiah is God has raised up the Babylonians and the Babylonians are coming against the nation of Judah. And God says they're coming in punishment and in judgment. And the question before us is, we have a plague of biblical proportions uh, happening on the earth today. And the question is, is did God raise up this plague? And I think the answer from my point of view is that yes, he did, that he's allowed this to happen. Uh, he's caused this to happen, perhaps we can even say. And in part, it's out of judgment. Uh, and he says very seriously, very sternly, very soberly to the people of Judah, look, your sins have found you out. And when I look around America, when I look around the world today, we are a sinful people. Uh, we have gone our own way. Uh, we have disregarded the things that the Lord has commanded for us to do. And we've chosen our own path. And the results of sin is always death. And so God sends uh, armies, God sends plagues, God sends earthquakes and difficulties and wars uh, to try to get our attention. And so I want to very soberly, very honestly uh, say to you that I do feel like God is moving in a mighty way. Now the encouragement out of this passage is a reminder that whenever God moves, he always does the same things. And any movement of God involves both judgment on one hand and salvation on the other. It was this way with Noah and the ark. It was this way in Sodom and Gomorrah when the Lord rescued Lot. It was this way in Egypt when the Lord used plagues uh, both to judge Egypt and to rescue his people. It was this way in Jeremiah when God raised up the Babylonians. This is always what God does. When God moves, he has to act in accordance with his nature. And his nature is one in which he is holy and also in which he is a redeemer. And so at the same time that God is moving in judgment, warning us about sins and the, and the wages of sins, he is also actively working for salvation. And the difference is, according to Jeremiah, is that those who trust in the Lord, it doesn't mean that we're perfect, it doesn't mean that we're without sin, but those who put their trust in the Lord will experience rescue, experience salvation. It doesn't mean that there won't be any suffering. You notice that he says to Jeremiah, I will save you, you will not fall by the sword, but you will escape with your life. It does sound like Jeremiah lost a lot uh, in the midst of what was going on in the midst of the judgment. Noah and his family also lost a lot in the flood. Lot and his family lost a lot when Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. Moses and the children of Israel also, there was some struggle and some suffering when God brought the plagues in Egypt. So too today there is some struggle and there is some suffering as God moves among us. But the good news is, is that whenever God moves, 
He does move in judgment because of the sins of the world, but he is always moving in salvation. And as we put our trust in him, we will see his salvation. I hope that's a word of teaching and a word of encouragement for you today. Ponder what God is up to. These are crazy times in which we live, but God is at work both for judgment and for salvation. And may we put our trust in him. Let me pray for us and may God bless you today. Father, thank you for this time in your word. Lord, give us understanding. It's so easy, God, to think that, well, this can't, stuff can't be happening today. Uh, it must be simply a scientific explanation. There must simply be some other explanation. Lord, help us to realize that the same God, uh, you, who was at work in the Old Testament and in the New Testament and has promised to work this way in the future through the book of Revelation, is at work now doing these kinds of things. Help us to take warning and to understand the wages of sin is death. But I praise you, God, that you are not only a holy God, you are redeeming and a loving God, and that everyone who puts their trust in you will experience a form of rescue, salvation, and your grace. And so, Lord, be near to us during these times, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful day.